News. Transfer News. Match Previews. Legend Interviews. Spurs Women. Press Conferences. Covering everything Tottenham and England. Welcome back to the channel. I'm at a ver <laughs> Start again. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm with the legend Neil Razor. I haven't had a, I haven't had a, even speak. I haven't had a drink yet. You, you were looking so well. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much. Yourself? You're yeah. Looking not too bad yourself? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm all good. Obviously, two spells at Spurs. Yep. What's your favourite memories? Oh, good question. Uh, playing with Glenn Hoddle. I think uh, when I first signed, I was 18. We all youth team and I started training. They, they made me train with the first team and I thought, I'm rubbish. It was a big shock to me, and uh, after training, Glenn Hoddle, you see me, I had a tatty old pair of boots on. Glenn Hoddle went to his locker and uh, gave me a pair of Hummels, gave me a pair of his, uh, a pair of his big boots. I've still, I've still got it home now, so Glenn Hoddle gave me his boots on my first out of training at Tottenham. And Glenn Hoddle was, I played for all these massive teams and these magnificent football stars and players, but Glenn Hoddle is the greatest footballer I've ever seen. I remember when you, when you uh, played for Spurs in the first Premier League season, 92-93, a fantastic assist in our own half. To Teddy to Sheringham. Sheringham. Yeah. Well, used to, we know me and Teddy. Incredible. Ted, we, used to, we grew up together. Uh, Teddy was a, a year older than me, or two years older than me in, in uh, school years. And uh, so when I was 15, he was playing the same uh, uh, youth team, South East County, with Ted. So yeah, I knew Ted. Teddy was the greatest head of the ball I've ever seen. So just split the defence for 50 yards, put it on his head. I said, Teddy, just keep running off my journey. I found it. It was like, it, it, honestly, that's one of the greatest goals I've ever been involved in. It never gets mentioned. So thank you very much for mentioning that. Well, you look pretty shocked as well yes, when, Leeds. when, yeah, four 0 Yeah, yes, um, you look pretty shocked as well when Jason Cundy scored from the halfway line. That was a tackle. Cundy the worst. <laughs> this, this is how bad Cundy is, right? This is how bad. And I've told him on the on the uh, on the sports bar. I've done the sports bar and uh, talked sport with Cundy. That's how bad Cundy is, right? That just signed me to play alongside him. That's how bad Cundy is. Without me, Cundy would never ever be a footballer. Fact. Razor, why did you leave Spurs in 93? Uh, I fell out with Sugar and Liverpool. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I went uh, you know, I got, I got Tottenham tattoo. Uh, massive okay. Tottenham, yes. To dare is to do. Wow. To dare is to do. So I was a massive that. Tottenham, yeah. A Millwall, Millwall and Tottenham. Because when you're a Millwall fan, you need a big team. <laughs> so I was Millwall and Tottenham as a kid, and I've uh, never ever lost, uh, would have left Tottenham, fell out with Alan Sugar. And Liverpool come in for me, and with Liverpool come, you know, it's a massive team, and there's nothing to do with the money. In your book, you said you are a Millwall fan. Yeah. You said Southampton made me into a man, yeah. Spurs made me into a better player, yeah. Liverpool was like being at the best club in the world, and yeah. West Ham, funniest and most enjoyable. Yeah, two years two years at West Ham, we come uh, fifth twice, uh, but we was all mates. I mean, it was, it, it was unbelievable. I was coming to the end of my career. Um, but uh, yeah, without, without time, I mean, Southampton made me, uh, made me into a, you know, I went to Southampton as a raw sort of teenager, left there as a good footballer, Tottenham made me into a proper footballer, you know. And who was behind that? Who was the driving force for that? Terry Venables, I mean Venables, I was a kid at Tottenham, um, I was about fifth in line, and Venables said to me, son, listen, uh, Southampton want you, uh, sorry, Millwall want you, a lot of teams wanted me, he said, go, go away for three years, improve, get better, bigger, stronger. Improve your discipline, he said, I'll sign you back. And I thought, yeah, no chance. He signed me back, he was true to his word. But he used to, when I was still at Southampton, he used to ring me like once every three months and uh, make sure I was all right. If, he, if he'd seen me do something wrong on telly, he'd say, you should have done this, should have done that. So he was, he was still, you know, keeping in touch with me. And the man he was, great man, God bless him, we, we, we've lost him, but he was a massive influence in my career. And he, uh, true to his word, brought me back, made me captain. And when uh, Sugar got rid of him, that's when I fell out of love with Tottenham. It's funny, back in that day, that was when you used to get the newspaper through the door to see the player holding up the shirt. None of this Twitter or no, speculation. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was just a crazy situation. I was just so devastated that they got rid of him. You know, just, I, I say, I, I love Tottenham, but I just fell out, fell out of love with him because of what they'd done to Terry. We had something really good going there. I've never ever left, uh, left Tottenham. We had a great team. We had, uh, you know, we signed Terry, we had Barnby coming through, Darren Ander, and we was, we was flying. and. For it all to come crashing within like a couple of hours in front of you, you know, it left a sour taste with me with, with Tottenham, but uh, I love them back again now. Tell me what it was like at Anfield when Spurs won 
Uh, Did I score an own goal with that one? Is that well, what you're getting I, I, to? No, I was going to get to where. Do you know um, what wound me up about that? against Klinsmann. Klinsmann, well, I, I scored an own goal. You, we, I think it was FA Cup, you beat us 2 1, I scored an own goal. And the next day in the paper, was Alan Sugar. He, he was kind of said, I knew Ruddock would always wanted to play for Tottenham. We very rarely win at Liverpool, that's why I mentioned it. I know, I know. Well, I had to score for you. So, you know, you, you never really beat us. I, I scored for the Tottenham. If you had to choose one of your ex-clubs who's your favourite, who would it be? Why are you putting me on this situation? Well, because I, I know that in your book you said that Liverpool, everyone asked you about Liverpool. Is it Liverpool? It's hard. We've got great memories from everyone, but... If Alan Sugar wouldn't fill out my arm, I would never, ever have left Tottenham. I got, you know, the old White Hart Lane. I was getting old. Osvald, I did this when I was there. Ozzy and Odorn, you know, Maxi Miller and... Robbo, the Allens, Ray Clements, Richard Goff, Chris Uton. Yeah, you're a Tottenham oh, fan. You're a Tottenham uh, fan. Uh, I mean, it, it, it is tough. I mean, Liverpool's a massive club. Um, I say I travelled well with Liverpool, but I would never have left Tottenham if, if Sugar and Venables would never have formed that. Speak to me about your hate for Arsenal, because you always seem to say in interviews you hate it's, Arsenal. It's not, it's not Arsenal, it's Arsenal fans, because Arsenal fans think they invented football. They did invent football, do you know what I mean? Get rid of Venga, shut the... Can I swear on this? Of course you can, shut of course the you can. fuck up. You did invent football, Spurs did, dickheads. Love it. Do you still look out for Tottenham results? Always, always. You know, big hands. I think he's not that big, is he? I can't, I've never met him. He's such a legend. Ah, he thanks, crackers. I love him so There's a lot much. of kissing going on here. <laughs> There's a lot of kissing well. going on here. Now, listen, Spurs, Spurs fans, I know, I'm a Spurs fan. As long as they have a go, they give their best. That's all we want. Fans ain't stupid. It's not hard. As a footballer, for the last 10, 15 years, watching Tottenham, they wind me up. Just try your bollocks off. Have a go. That's all we want. If you lose, you get, you get beat. If you win, we're happy. Just try your bollocks off. That's all we want. Christian Romero. Yeah. What do you think of him? A uh, bit of a pussy, bit of a lunatic. Um, he, he don't like, he don't like it, he don't like. He, uh, I'd love to play against him, but I'd love to play alongside him because I would have taught him disguise it. You don't have to, you know what I mean? Go flying in, wait your time. Why go flying in when you're winning the game? All right, when you're getting beat four 0 then hurt people and get sent off. Don't get sent off when we're winning or we're drawing and we can win the game. Relaxation, brother! Is that what you wanted to hear? Yeah. Well, Good no. Um, Razor, what else do you think that Spurs need to really push on and be title contenders, be up there with the likes of City, Liverpool, etc.? Well, it's hard because at the moment, all the massive players that come up, Spurs, Spurs were 10th in line to sign players. They're about 4th or 5th in line. But we're getting better and better and better. I mean, the stadium's improved. You want to come to London, you want to play for Tottenham because of the stadium. But uh, 10 years ago, all the great players that were coming up for sale, they were going for other clubs. So Spurs ain't far behind At the start other of the- clubs. I'm still talking. <laughs> Give it another five years, Spurs will have the pick of the best, and that's what's going to happen. At the start of this conversation, you said you, yeah. and then you said us. Yeah. Well, I've, I've smacked myself down, I must have known. You've got me there, you're such a good journalist. What would be a good, successful season for Tottenham this year? Champions um, League? We come fifth. We have a go. I'll be at the start of the season. Big hands come in. Everyone was uh, question mark over Big hands. If we'd, we'd have come fifth at the start of the season, sixth, I'd have been happy. But now, I'm looking for fourth. I'm looking for attractive football, good football. But we Spurs, aren't we? Let's not over, over-egg ourselves. We are Spurs. We come fifth, fourth, sixth. Win it. That's what we do because we're Spurs. You're looking so well. Does that white suit, that Liverpool suit, still fit now? Right, it was creamy, dickhead, before you start, right? And how many cream suits have you worn at Wembley? How many cream suits have you worn at Wembley, you fucking dickhead? None. Thank you. What's the most memorable day of your football career, would you say? Oh, make me dad happy. Playing for England, make me dad happy. Um, looking up in the stands at Wembley, seeing my dad there with all his mates. He's, uh, we ain't here no more, God bless him, but... Uh, Best thing ever done in football is make my dad proud of me, and I think that's the best thing you can do, make your dad proud. What's next for you? Um, what's next for me? I'm going to, well, I'm working in Bangkok on Wednesday for a oh, week. Yeah. Working, obviously. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to Bangkok, um, got a couple of nights out there playing golf, fishing, so that's the next big thing in my life. Working, obviously. 
Of course, you're at an Echo 61 event this yep. evening. Yep. What does it mean to you to engage with the fans again? You know, I love that. You know, I'm a football fan myself, so, you know, I, I'm one of them. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I meet everyone, I have photos with everyone, and drink with everyone, and sit with everyone, so it's nice. You know, I'm a football fan, it's nice to hear. Because I don't get to talk them much, so it's nice to hear our, our, our proper fans really think about You should get down to about time. Our team. I'm too famous, you know what I mean? It's, it's hard, it's easy for you walking, no one knows you. When I walk in, everyone on photos, and it takes me a, forever to get to the, the <laughs> inner sanctum, the inner arena. So, no, but, you know, it's, it, it's, it's I'm always, I do up and down speakers, so most Fridays, Saturday nights, I'm around the country, so I don't get a lot of time to go to, go to Tottenham, but uh, always, uh, always look at the results, always uh, watch the games. So. Last question for you. Um, today, it's been reported about blue cards. What do you make of it? Sim bins. Off for Long 10 time. minutes. So if someone goes off for 10 minutes, then the other, the other team is just going to sit back. It's going to ruin football. You get sim bin, they're just going to park the bus. You can just park the bus, bus for 10 minutes and it's going to ruin football. Mm. You know what I mean? What happens? What happens if you do it in the 96th minute? You're going to do it. Well, you're going to get sim bin. Does the sim bin go to the other guy, next game? You would have had a few of them, wouldn't you? Oh, man alive. But you're going to take one for the team anyway. You, yeah. you, you know, you're going to get some of them. Well, you don't, you, 80th minute, if someone goes through, I'm going to, I'm going to take them out, I'm going to get sent off, I'm going to take one of the team, just because yeah. so, you want the result. What's I'm saying? What happens if in the 92nd minute you do it? You get sim binned for a minute and it don't pass, you know what I mean? It's going to ruin it. And someone gets sim binned, you're just going to sit back for 10 minutes, it's going to ruin the spectacle, it's going to ruin it for the fans. It's all about the fans. Without the fans, football won't be there. So you want the game to be more lively, you want the game to be more exciting, and sim binned is going to take the game back and it's going to be boring. I've got to ask you. Um, that was your last question. You trophy, said, I know. I've got to ask you. Trophies. Spurs and England. We've we've been starved. Spurs yeah. and England. When when are the trophies coming? Spurs and England. It's got to be soon. It's, it's coming home. It's coming. Tottenham's coming home. It's coming. Listen, we all want it, but don't be so greedy. You've got the best stadium in the world. You've got the best manager in the world. It will come. All right. Razor, thank Dick you so Edge. much. Thank you. On plot. But yeah, make sure you come out. <laughs> thank you. Wish Rivero, you well. Use your nut, you dickhead. Use your nuts. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>